there is a campaign underway in the UK to overturn the vote for Brexit. It's called the People's Vote, a fancy name for a second vote on the Brexit referendum. When I asked the People's Vote for an interview to explain why the first vote doesn't count but a second one might, they gave me Femi Oluwole. Femi Oluwole is the co-founder of Our Future, Our Choice, OFUC, operating under the umbrella of the People's Vote, targeting young voters. OFUC believes there is no good that can come out of Brexit for young people. His team had a list of demands ahead of our interview um, that the interview be shown in full without edit. And as promised, that link is available now on Hopkins World. Femi even announced on his Twitter feed he didn't want to do the interview with me, which might help explain his outfit or lack thereof. But life is short and many of us have really important things to do with our day. So I have made this short praise of the salient points, an executive summary, if you will, of the arguments presented by Femi and the campaign group Our Future, Our Choice. I'll let Femi explain what they're all about in his own words. Uh, our campaign basically says uh, young people are not happy with the way things are going. Uh, nobody is happy with the way things are going, especially people who voted for Brexit because they wanted things to get better and the government has been screwing it up. So there has to be a vote on the final, on the final deal or if there's no deal, a vote on that. The Our Future, Our Choice Brigade like to quote the fact that in five years, the majority of the people who voted in the referendum will have voted Remain. What he's trying to say here is that a lot of people who voted Leave will be dead. But I'm still alive and I wondered, does it mean that your vote is more important the younger you are? What if I have a terminal illness? Should I even bother turning up to vote? In, in 2021, 20, uh, uh, according to the pollsters who have done the calculations based on the original vote and the age demographics of, of that vote, uh, we will have a population in this country that voted to remain. In 2021, mm. we will have, so hold on, 18, 19, 20, yeah, you're three years. In three years, we'll mm. have a population in this country that voted remain. Mm. That's yeah. your argument. Oh, that makes the point that before Brexit is even complete, well, um, you have the transition period which goes until the end of 2020, uh, and then after that we then have to start making all these trade deals with other countries, we have to, uh, we have to um, re-legislate the country to get all our okay. own laws. But, but the point so you're Brexit saying is in three years, the majority of the country would have voted mm. Remain. Yeah. But I will hopefully, I mean, God knows actually, probably mm. not, but I'll hopefully still be around. Yeah. So are you saying that the younger you are, the more democracy you should have? No, I'm saying, I'm saying that everyone's vote is equal. And given that in, in 2021, if you count everybody who's around at that point vote as equal, then we will have a population that voted to remain. Now that would mean that the will of the people in 2021 will be pro-remain. More importantly, I wanted to know just who is funding FEMI and OFAC. They have the use of prestigious offices right on the Thames in London. They're campaigning on the road across the UK and have a sizeable team to fund and feed. Femi has clearly gone way off script. So uh, the vast majority of our funds are crowdsourced. So um, in December, I basically quit my job um, and uh, launched a crowdfunder that said, and this was before I met the other members of, of OFOC, and they basically said, I basically said, hi everybody, I'm gonna be trying to deal with Brexit for the next year or so, please make sure I don't starve. So you have a crowdfunding site? Uh, yeah, I, I created a crowdfunding site in December. Uh, Do you that have raised... that crowdfunding site now? Uh, right now, yeah, we have we have the, you can donate on the on the website. Um, Do you have a crowdfunding site now? Uh, I think it I think I think it you ran don't. out. I think it ran out in. Um... You don't have a crowdfunding site. So who's funding you now? I'm saying that we ha we had a crowdfunding. You did site have in, a crowdfunding site. Which who's raised, funding raised... you now? Who's funding Millbank Floor? Hmm? Who's, if I tried to have a floor of that building, it'd be very expensive. Hmm. Who's paying for that? You're asking who's funding the people that let us squat in their offices. I'm asking who's paying for the offices that you use. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a simple question. Uh, that would be a mixture of, I think, Open Britain, I think... I've uh, completely lost your eye line. Yeah. It's a thing about eyesight, isn't it? When people mm. don't know the answer, they look away. Uh, well, we get, we get some money from, from Open Britain, we get some money from Best Open Britain. Open Britain. Open Britain and Best Britain, they get... Who they get, funds they get, Open Britain? Uh, they, have an on, they have an online donate, donation platform as well. 
Um, so we've, we've, we have an agreement with specifically with Open Britain and Best for Britain that the money they give us come, come from their online donations. So curious funding streams. Who's funding uh, People's Vote? Uh, again, online donations pr primarily. Things were not adding up now, and in an explosive fit of rage, an OFUC team member overseeing our interview burst into the studio to shut down the conversation, telling Femi it was time to go home. Mm -hmm. And a, na a name of another pro-European group that funds you would be? Uh, Best for Britain. Great. And, and, and we were told that this would be stopping after 10 minutes. We're taking a break. Sure. How long would you like a break for? Uh, 10 minutes, if we decide to come back. You knew this was not what we agreed. All right, Femi, let's go talk. Okay. Uh, you keep filming, guys. Yeah, thanks. So uh, Femi is now going to go and take a break because his manager uh, doesn't approve of the line of questioning we're that we're asking. It's an break. open, um, it's we're an open sure line of questioning, about Brexit. and then That's we will continue. Do come on camera. You're welcome to keep recording. Do we're come on here. camera. Goodbye. You're going. I don't know if Femi wants to go. If uh, I'm honest. I'm, 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 uh, uh, Femi, the, the, I don't think leaving's the answer. If I'm honest with you, I'm, 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 I'm going to come. I'm going to come back, but I just, I just wanted to. I just wanted to. Yeah, go and have this. a little chat with your, with your uh, manager. With his colleague. Thank you. It's a curious thing. I ask a simple question, and all I honestly want is a simple answer. But rather than face uncomfortable truths head on, campaigning types prefer to try to waffle their way out of it with an answer no one really cares about. I was struck by the differences between Femi and myself at his age. I grew up working in the local Wimpy, McDonald's, Woolworths and the local cake shop for £1.40 an hour. That's about $2 in new money. And after uni, I joined the army. I wondered if Femi had ever worked in places where people can be less than polite or where it is your job to clean the bathroom or shine the stainless steel countertop or whether he'd actually ever had a real job that he didn't quit. What job did you do when you were 14 or 15, 16? Uh, I think I did, I did I, yeah, I worked as a drummer in the local church and uh, I uh, also helped with the, power, helped with the power, power, um, PowerPoint projections for the hymns and stuff. Uh, that was what I was doing. And that, that was, it wasn't really a job, it was, it was, it was voluntary at the weekends. Uh, I think that's so you didn't really have a job. Did you? Did you? Have, when, have when you when ever was, had a part-time job? Yeah, 14, 15, 16. What part-time job have you had at 16? So I worked in McDonald's. I was the drive-through girl. I was the pick and mix girl at Woolworths. This this is very obscure to mm. an American audience, I respect. But I was the the bun girl in the local cake shop. Where, mm. where did you work when you were 16 or 17? Uh, well, personally, I've, personally, I've, I've worked as a delivery driver for Domino's. I've worked as the pot, pot wash, so doing dealing with the dishwasher, washing the pots at a pub. Uh, I worked as um, hotel receptionist, uh, where I did everything from uh, sorting out the pool, cleaning toilets. Yeah. And, and then you went on to have an internship in Europe. Uh, yeah, a, a couple of them actually. And then you've left your internship. Mm -hmm. Who uh, pays you now? So right now, um, I'm, I'm, pay I'm paid for, from OFUC itself, which again has its own crowdfunder and then gets and gets. And we gets don't have any crowdfunding at OFUC now. We just established well, that. Uh, well, so for, who, who for, for, for forty-five thousand pounds doesn't just disappear. That is money. That is money that we we, we have we have in the bank. Which but is who's paying you now? Right now, OFUC is paying me out of the money that we that we've raised from this crowdfunder, and, and the minority, a small minority, comes from um, uh, other pro-European groups. And I wondered with these campaign types, so certain their view is right, so sure they know better, and yet so far removed from regular Brits grafting in mundane jobs, trying to do the best they can for their family and afford the things they need. It seems so often those in favour of Remain come from a rarefied world of privilege, so far removed from the impact of open borders or immigration on hospitals and schools. What gives Femi the right to try and subvert the will of hardworking people in the UK? I think Femi's most pertinent argument is this. You voted for Brexit because you wanted things to get better. 
Right now, uh, a third of our food comes, comes, comes from Europe. Right now, half of our trade is with Europe. Many of the products in your supermarket, they're, they're, they're from Europe. And what, what we're doing right now is we're creating a situation where we have different laws on either side of the border. Now, that is only going to increase costs because that's why businesses want to, to remain in the single market because that means they only need to make a single version of their product for it to be legal across 28 jurisdictions. Now, that is what lowers costs. If you, if you leave the EU, if you have to trade further away, if you make it more expensive to trade, that's going to make your life harder. If businesses from Japan, for example, want Want to, when they invest in this country, they build factories here because we have easy access to the rest of Europe, for example, with Nissan and Sunderland. If you want things to get better, if you want the jobs, if you want jobs, if you want things to be cheap, Brexit is just going to screw with things. And if you look at, if you look at what Theresa May is doing, she is going to give away your sovereignty. That is what she's asking for. She is asking to be part of a common rule book in which the UK no longer has a, has a pen. Right now, we have 73 of the 750 MEPs in the European Parliament. That gives us three times more voting weight than the average European country. And what, what we're asking for now is to give up our say, to be less sovereign than EU members. Now, I think that is going against the will of the people. But I remember when we voted on the 23rd of June, our choices were leave or remain, black or white, this or that. We voted leave, accepting the rough with the smooth, despite project fear and regardless of the final deal, haggled by spineless politician. No deal sounds like precisely the kind of Brexit I voted for in the first place. Regardless of our differences, I'm struck that Femi and I aren't divided by Brexit or whether we support leave or remain or politics or even by our age. I have faith in Britain. I believe we're stronger standing on our own two feet, trading openly with the rest of the world, controlling our own borders, making our own rules according to the democratic will of the people. Working for a living brings a whole new understanding of the value of democracy and the country you pay to support. It is different for Femi and his friends, protected by the bank of mum and dad, gifted private schooling, and now bankrolled by the easy income of donor dollars and campaign cash. They have yet to truly value independence. I think it will be best for Britain. I think it could be best for these young lads too. Perhaps, Femi, you should give it a try.